the battlefield for my Lord. Lord, we come this morning just to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we just say thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. Lord, we say thank you for watching over us on last night. And Lord, we just thank you for your traveling grace and mercy, Lord. And Lord, we ask right now that you will bless all of the sick, the shut-in, the less fortunate, and the bereaved families, Lord. Continue to strengthen and be with the Reverend Lord Warren's family and Mrs. Uh, Camel's family, Lord, and Chris Brown family, Lord. Let them know that you are there for them, Lord. Let them give all of their pains and suffering unto you, Lord, and know that you are a healer, Lord, and you will give them the comfort that they need, Lord, as they go through this transitional period, Lord. And Lord, right now, we just say thank you for blessing us this morning, Lord. We said thank you for allowing us to have food to eat this morning. And Lord, we say thank you for allowing us to have shelter and having a comfortable bed to sleep in, Lord. 
And Lord, right now we ask that you would go into the prisons, Lord, and we ask that you would just bless those who are incarcerated, Lord. You know their hearts, you know their needs and their desires right now. And we ask that you would send your anointing power to them right now. And Lord, we ask that you would just bless Bethel Amy Church in West Memphis. Come in, Holy Spirit, right now and have your way in our worship service on this day. Holy Spirit, just have your way right now. And Lord, we ask that you will bless our pastor, Reverend Larry M. Banks, today, Lord. We ask that you will bless him as we honor him and give appreciation to him today, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you will just use him today as he brings us a word, Lord. And Lord, allow us to open our hearts and our minds that we may receive the word, Lord, because we need you, Lord. Lord, we need thee every hour. No other help we know, Lord, we need thee right now. Bless us, guide us, direct us, and protect us in spite of, no matter what it looks like we're going through, Lord, but we know that you are a healer, Lord. You are a doctor. You are a judge. You are a lawyer, Lord. And Lord, we know that you can do everything, Lord, and we just give our trust and our faith in you, Lord, and we ask that you would just strengthen us in the midst of it all, Lord. And Lord, sometimes we may fall weak, Lord, but we ask that you would just strengthen us, Lord. And right now, we ask that you will continue to forgive us of all our sins by thought, word, and deed, Lord. We love you and we praise and magnify your holy name, Lord. And we just say thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross that we may have life and have it more abundantly, Lord. Bless us right now. Holy Spirit, just have the way in our worship service. Holy Spirit, have your way. We love you, Lord. We honor, we glorify your holy name on this day and forevermore. Amen, amen, and amen. Sometimes we get weary down here. Sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we're wounded. Sometimes we're torn. But we need to know that Jesus is our everything. He is our burden bearer, our way maker, our heaven old share. He is our mind regulator and heart fixer, our all in all, joy in time of sorrow, hope for tomorrow. He is, I don't know about you, he is all that I have, but believe this church, he is all that I need. For he is my everything. If you all will go with me to Genesis, the 28th chapter, the 10th through the 19th verse. I'm going to read from the King James Version. And Jacob went out from Bathsheba and went towards Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God 
ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thou father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou life. To thee will I give it, and to thou seed. And thou seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And thee, and thou seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places where thou goest. And will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep. And he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillars and set it up for pillars and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Love at the first. May the, may the Lord bless the reading and the ears and the doers of that holy word. I read the word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 I'm not 
Genesis chapter 28, that was read for your hearing. And I invite your attention, I'm going to read a lengthy passage of scripture. So I want to do a little bit of a repeat from Reverend Jackson. And then I want to add a little to it. Amen. Amen. Let the Lord have his word. You know, it's good to be alive, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. So, so come with us. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm going to read a little lengthy verse because I'm going to try to be as brief as I can. Uh, uh, Genesis chapter 28, beginning with verse 10. And I'm going to read through verse 22. That's, that's a lot of read. Bear with me. Amen. Are you there? Amen. Allow my, me to read from the contemporary English translation according to Genesis chapter 28 beginning with verse 10. Jacob left the town of Rashid and he started out for a run. At sunset, he stopped for the night and went to sleep, resting his head on a large rock. Are you all with me? Yeah. Listen, verse 12. In a dream, he saw a ladder yes. and reached for earth to heaven. Yes. And God's angels were going up yes. and down on him. The Lord was standing beside the ladder. And here's what he said. I am the Lord God who was worshipped by Abraham and Isaac. I will give to you and your family the land on which you are now sleeping. Your descendants will be spread all over the earth in all directions and will become as numerous as the specks of dust. Your family will be a blessing to all people. Are you all listening? Amen. Verse 15. This is the Lord talk. Wherever you go, yes, yes. I will watch over you. Then later, I will bring you back to this land. I will lead you 
I will do all I have promised. So Jacob woke up suddenly and he thought the Lord is in this place and I didn't even know. Then Jacob became frightened and he said this is a fearful place. It must be the house of God. And the ladder to heaven. Oh, yeah. That's more than we're going to be able to handle. But I got to read a few more verses for you. Yeah. Verse 18. So when Jacob got up early the next morning, he took the rock that he had used for a pillar and stood it up for a place of worship. Then he poured olive oil on the rock to dedicate it to God. Are you all listening? Yes. And he named the place Bethel. Yes. Does that ring a bell? Yes. Before that, the name was Love's. So come on back with me to verse 20. You all there? Don't go to sleep on me yet. Jacob solemnly promised to God. Here's the promise. If you go with me and you watch over me as I travel, and if you give me food and clothes, and if you'll bring me safely home, again. Yes. You will be my God. This rock will be your house. And then Jacob promises God I will give back to you a tenth of everything you give me. Oh, yes. Yes. Lord have mercy. That's, that's some kind of passage of scripture there. And I know that some of us are somewhat familiar with it and I I know, you know, we've read around it and read over it and read behind it and looked forward. But today, I, I thank God sharing this passage of scripture with us. And it is from two of those verses that I've just read that I want to try to give some focus of attention while you're with me. And th that would be verses 15 and 20. Keep back at it for just a second. Verse 15. You there? This is the promise of God to Jacob. He says, wherever you go, I, God, will watch over you. Then later, I'm going to bring you back to this land. I'm not going to leave you. And he says to him, I will do all that I have promised. So come with me to verse 25. 20. I'm not going to rewrite it today. Verse 20. You there? Jacob then solemnly promised God. And here's his promise. If you go with me, and if you watch over me as I travel, and if, and if you give me food and you give me clothes, and you bring me back safely home, you will be my God. Here's what I want to talk about. And try to hurry up and sit down. A promise is a promise. Amen. A promise is a promise. Let's pray. 
To thee, O Lord God, we give thanks. We reverence your name because your name is worthy of all our praise. Come back here now. Somebody needs your word. So from heaven, pour out your spirit and we might receive your holy word and be blessed. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer and the church says, Amen. A promise is a promise. Children today, and even when we were children, right? You can remember though, that far. When, when you were a child as well, when we would get in trouble and know that we were in trouble. Yeah, I mean, we didn't just get in trouble. Sometimes we got in trouble and we knew we were in trouble because somebody had told us, don't do this, don't do that, don't go there, and don't do it on the internet. And then when we got caught, amen, somebody. And we knew what was about to happen. Uh, and especially for those of us that were told, go out and get me a spit. You, you, you knew what that meant without them saying a single word. Yeah. So, so before you got that whipping, amen, somebody. You promised on your bending knees to your mama, your dad, or whomever that you would never do it again. I mean, you gave your word. You, you pleaded with them. If they just give you another chance and don't whip you this time, you will never do it again. Now, you and I both know that that promise didn't last very long. And especially if you didn't get that whip that you deserved. Amen, somebody. Now the truth is that there are some there are some joyous times when we make promises also. Yeah, sometimes we're happy and, and in our excitement we, 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 we make promises. Some of us remember some of those promises that we made in joyous times. A, a man and a woman were become an adult and, and we made these promises and we were getting ready to get married and and, and we promised and made the vow, and we said we're going to love her. We're going to love him. I'm going to comfort you, and I'm going to comfort him. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to honor him or her. I'm going to keep him or her. You made promises. You said you're going to do it even in sickness and in health. You, you promised that you were going to do it. For, for as long as you live, you made a promise. You said, we said, I mean, quickly. I mean, we didn't hesitate, but I mean, in this excitement and in this, this big hour of, of celebration, we couldn't wait to say, I do, I do, I will, I will, I do it forever. You promised everything. Do you make, you made the promise. My sisters and my brothers, and sometimes even in trouble and in distresses, we make promises. Yeah. We, 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 we make all kinds of nice, good promises uh -huh, to God. Yeah, we, I'm distressed, I'm in trouble, I need help. You want to call on the name of God and and we appeal to God and we say, God, if, if you just deliver me this time, I promise you I'll do better. I, I promise I'm going to walk better. God, if you'll do it this time, I promise you I'll talk better. I won't say the words I know I shouldn't say. If you just do it this time, I'll trust you more. I believe more strongly in you, your word. Yeah. You just promise in distress all kinds of things. 
you'll just do it for me, God. I promise you that 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 beginning today, I'll stop doing. It. I'll, I'll stop going over there. I'll stop doing that. I'll stop saying what I'm supposed to say. I shouldn't say. I'll stop. I'll start church serving. If, if you will come and do it this time, God, I'll serve you better. Yeah. I, I'll pay my time. Just, just deliver me this time. You, you, you understand in distress? Sometimes we, we, we make promises and I don't know if you plan to keep the promise or not, but you, you we make those promises. Amen, somebody. Now, I got to tell you this. There was a time when a man's word uh -huh. was his bond. Yeah. 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 You didn't need a written contract. There was a time when, when, when you didn't have to have a legal Binding document negotiated or signed. You simply gave the man your word. You gave them your promise. And that deal didn't have to be closed or sealed with a signature. Amen. The, the, the only thing that sealed the deal was the fact that you looked him straight in his eyes and you gave him a firm handshake. There was a time when doing business, it was handled the old school way. That was then. Uh huh. I, I saw my daddy make many of these. Amen. I, I, I watched him in the old school method. That, that's how we pay for our groceries on a, on a handshake. That, that's how we got our hardware supplies from the store, from a handshake. That's how we got ice from the house. Oh, y'all don't remember about ice. I remember you. That, that's what we did before we had the refrigerator. Amen. Sorry. You had to go to the ice house to get the ice, and, and it was on a handshake that the man gave us. Amen, somebody. The ice blocks that we needed. That's how the plumber was paid. And that's how the electrician was paid. It was paid on them looking them in the eye and giving them a handshake that they would get their money. Right. The matter is, you know, even to this day, we make promises. Yeah. You got that credit card. You, you, you promise that you're going to pay them a certain amount every month. You got that card note? You promise them that you're going to pay them so much per month. You got that mortgage, that house note? You promise somebody that you were going to pay that. If you got the electricity, water, and gas in your house, you promise that when you got the bill, you were going to pay that bill. You got that cell phone, you promise that you're going to pay that bill every month like clockwork. You got that cable bill that you can't do without anymore. You're going to pay it. Yeah, yeah you, you, you're going to pay it. And can I help somebody? Just like you got your house notes, your car notes, your, all these notes, the church has notes too. Amen, somebody. We got electricity, we got gas, we want you to be comfortable when you come sit up in here. The church has meals just like you have meals. Amen, somebody. So, so, so let's go now. The, the, the Old Testament, back in the beginning, was Genesis. Here's a situation where even God mm -hmm, made promise. Uh -huh, the, the Old Testament in chapter 28, back in that verse 10, it validates for us that God made promise. And this particular time it was with Jacob. Jacob, the Bible says one day, had left Bathsheba and headed over to Haran, not too far away. But, but that he stopped overnight and, and he went over in a corner and decided that he would go to sleep until daybreak. Amen. Yeah, he worked hard all day. He traveled all day in the heat and the sun. And, and oddly enough, when he went over to find him a sleeping spot, 
He used the rock for his pillow. I don't know what was wrong with Jacob. But when I get ready to go to sleep and rest, I want something soft to lay my head. Amen, somebody. But but oddly here, Jacob chose a rock to lay his head on. I'm going to deal with that another day. So quickly, and not long thereafter, Reverend Jackson, the Bible says in verse 12 that he went to sleep. And when he went to sleep, amen, you don't, may not know about this, but he was overcome with a, a dream. Uh huh. And, and you know about a dream. I'll deal with that another time. But 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 he started in his mind, in his spirit, in his heart. He he saw something in a dream. And what was it that Jacob saw sleeping his head on a rock in a dream at night? He saw a lamb. And Jacob says that the lamb went from earth all the way up to him. And Jacob kept looking because no doubt in the tree he was puzzled and he saw some of God's angels. And uh, Jacob says that the angels were going up the ladder and some of them were coming down. Yeah, I, I, I hate Jacob didn't tell us who the angels were. I hate Jacob didn't get into the discussion about where the angels were coming from and what they were doing. Amen, somebody. He just left it alone and said he saw them going up and saw them coming down. And Jacob says and he looked a little closer and he saw the Lord Standing by the lamb. Yeah, and anytime you can see the Lord, it's going to get your attention. He didn't understand it, but he was looking through the tree and he saw the Lord standing there. But the Bible says that the Lord just wasn't standing there, he had something to say. Amen. Here's what the Bible says that the Lord said as the angels were going up and coming down and Jacob was lying there on a rock sleeping. He says to Jacob, I am the Lord God who was worshipped by Abraham and Isaac. Jacob, you need to know I'm the one that Abraham and Isaac worship. Here's where you got to take this with you when you go. God makes a promise. He says to him, I will give to you and to your family the very land where you will sleep. The Lord said to Jacob in the dream, your descendants, your offspring will spread all over the earth. If you go north, they're going to go there. If you go south, they're going to go there. If you go east, they're going to go there. If you go west, they're going to be in every direction. He says, they're going to be so many of them that they're going to be as numerous as the specks of dust. They're just going to be everywhere. And then the Lord says to Jacob in the dream, your family is going to be a blessing for all people. And I help somebody, you be very careful how you treat other people. Because you don't know who it is that the Lord has decided to send your way. You, you don't know who it is that 
God is using to test us. They're going to be everywhere. That lets me know I may not even know who they are. Amen, somebody. But follow then with the promise in verse 15. He says to Jacob, wherever you go, no matter what direction that you go in, uh-huh, he says, I will be with you. I will watch over you. Can I help somebody? That's why you shouldn't have any worries and any concerns about what you are doing when you're working for the Lord because he has promised to watch over us. Hurt, harm, or danger, you are shielded. You are protected. Amen. Because his promise, his word was he's going to watch over us. Now, 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 Here, here's something in this promise that the Lord makes. He says to, to Jacob, and now, 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 later on, I'm going to bring you back to this barren land. That's like saying to him, you're going to make a complete circle. And you're going to come right back here. Amen. And, and the Lord says to him, Jacob, take me from a word. He says, I won't leave. In sickness and in sorrow, I'm going to be right there with you. In your trials and your tribulation, I'll be there. In your confusion, I will be there. I promise that I won't leave you. Here's the part I got to shout about. Yeah, and that, that, and that 15th verse, as, as it closes out there, the Lord says to Jacob in the dream while he's sleeping on a hard rock, he says to him, brother, I'm going to do all the things that I have promised you. Yeah. Well, everything I just promised to you that I laid out for you, Jacob, Know that I'm going to do it all. I promise you. I will do everything. You're going to leave and I'm, you're going to come back and, and I'm going to protect you. I'm going to cover you. I'm going to hold you in the hollow of my hand. You will be protected at all times. Amen. I'm going to do everything I promise. That's why I say to you, a promise is a promise. Now can I take my seat on verse 16 here suddenly? After God was finished, Jacob woke up. He was in fear and trembling. I don't know if you like me, but I've had those dreams where I would wake up and I wanted to really read it. Uh, and so because of the dream, the Bible says, suddenly, all of a sudden, he woke up. He was in fear and trembling. And he, he thought, did y'all hear the song? He, he thought and he said The Lord is in this place. I mean, it's, it's so strong and so powerful. I felt it in the dream. And Jacob says, and I didn't even know it. When you come into God's house, I get my back up and say it another way. When you drive up in the parking lot of God's house, something ought to start to happen to you. If it happened, didn't happen when you left home, if it didn't happen to you while you were getting dressed, when you come up on God's property, something ought to happen to you. You ought to know that you are in the presence of the Lord. It didn't happen to you in the parking lot. Amen. When you come in his house, you ought to know that you are not in your house. You ought to know that you are not in your mama and your dad's house. You ought to know that you are in the presence and the house of God. So Jacob said, it must be the house of God. 
Then Jacob says that, and that ladder leads to heaven. So let's go on home from here. The Bible says that Jacob got up early that next morning and he took the rock that he had used to sleep on. Took the rock over. He poured some oil on it, consecrated it. Yeah. He blessed it. It was something about that hard rock that got Jacob that night. God says that he took that rock and he, he dedicated to God. Yeah. And the Bible says that he remembered what he had got in a dream, and so he said, now, this is Bethlehem. I'm going to forever remember Bethlehem. I should never forget what happened to me this night. And I can't forget what God has told me in my dream. This place shall forever be called Bethlehem. And if God brings me back, I'm going to build the house of God. And I'm going to name it Bethel. Yeah. So that, that, that same morning, Jacob then makes a promise to God. In verse 20, Jacob says to God, now, I know what I just came through. I know what you showed me in the dream. I, I got that. I, you saw what I just did with this rock. And so Jacob says to God, God, now, if you go with me, what do you mean, Jacob? If God go with you, he, he, he just promised you a few seconds ago that he was going to be with you. He told you that in verse 15. So then Jacob says, if you go with me, God, and if, if you if you just watch over me as I travel, what do you mean, Jacob? The Lord just told you that when you go, he was going to watch over you. He told you that already in his promise. Now Jacob says, if you go with me, God, if you'll watch over me, and if you'll give me food, if you'll give me clothes, but what do you mean, Jacob? I just told you a moment ago in verse 15 that I would give you food. That I would provide for you. So, so, so Jacob's promise is if, if you will bring me back safe home again, if you will leave me out and you will bring me back, Jacob says that do all that God did, you will be my God. Jacob says, and then I'm going to build, take this rock and I'm going to build your house. In the future, Jesus said it another way. He told Peter, on this rock, I'm going to be a my church. Jacob early had said, on this rock, I'm going to build your house. It's the same rock. It's the same house. It's everything that God has put together. Jacob goes on in the promise and he says, you're not ready for this so you go over to me when you get ready. Jacob says at the close of his promise to God, he says to God, Brother Spark, he says, and, and when I build your house, I will give back to you uh -huh, one tenth of, of everything you give me. You give me family, you get 10% 10, 10 back. You give me money, I give you 10% back. You give me oxen and oxen and horses and whatever you give me, I'm giving you 10%. Amen, somebody. That, that's the promise 
that Jacob made to God because a promise is a promise. My prayer today is that someone, somewhere, yeah, somebody, somewhere will, will make a promise to God. So, somebody here today, and someone under the sound of my voice, you may have promised to God a long time ago what you were going to do. But down through the years, you realize that, hey amen, if you did realize this, you ought to realize that. You haven't kept your promise to God. So, if you've never made a promise to God, today is a good day for you to step out. Go for him and make a promise. If you have, in fact, made a promise to God and you haven't kept your end of the deal, today is a good day to renew your promises that you made to God. Can I tell you why you ought to do it? Because everything that God has promised you, he's delivered. He woke you up this morning, called you in your right mind, food on the table, clothes to wear, a vehicle to drive, amen, somebody, and gasoline to go in. He's kept his promise. Every one of us has been kept. But we haven't always kept our promise. As we stand, there ought to be someone. As we stand in our Facebook land, Zoom land, come on and stand on your feet with us. But today would be an awesome opportunity for you to make your promise to God. To step out by faith and trust Him. Yeah, trust God. Believe on Him. And if you've made a promise, and you haven't kept your promise to God, come on, today, why don't you renew your commitment with Him? Whether you're with us on Facebook or Zoom, YouTube, or in-house, this is your opportunity. Come now. Give God a chance. Renew your promise. Renew your vow. Or give Him your first promise. Your love of the church will for you. Come in, come on. Go on to the chat box. Give us a chance to share the love of Jesus with you. Give us an opportunity to share the salvation of God. This is your opportunity. This is your hour. Go to this church. Somebody say tithes. Somebody say offerings. Yeah, so if you are a member, you ought to be given and paying and returning to God your tithes. Amen. If you are someone sharing with us on Facebook, on Zoom, on YouTube, and if the Lord places it on your heart, perhaps you should consider giving it an offering, a love offering to the church that God's house may meet all of his things. Let the church say amen. In-house, you know what we do? We have our mask on. We stay 12 feet apart. We stay in where we are, facing the wall, and we come without time. Facebook friends, if you want to share in this opportunity, we like to share. There are several ways you can do so. Cash out, dollar sign. Bethel AMB, WM Arkansas, just go 
there and you can share it. You can also go to Gilgamesh. Just go to Bethlehem the church. Share there in the gift. As you have this opportunity to give. city, our state, our federal government. They need our prayers. We lift up our soldiers that are stationed throughout the world in harm's way. We lift up our 46th president of the United States of America, his family and his staff, the vice president, her family, her staff. God, we lift up every single church door that's open under the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. Have mercy and bless, we pray. One moment for you and your family. One for me, my family. It's from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 15 and 20. A promise is a promise. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, and rest will devour each one of us, now, forever. Join me three times together, say amen together, let the church say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, God keep you, and our prayer. Have a blessed week in the Lord. Amen.
How about it? My brothers and sisters, just before you go, there's something that the stewards would like to say, I believe, yes. before you all depart. Please be seated. Give us about 10 minutes. Um, Reverend Jackson is coming. Will you all please be seated? As you know, today has been set aside that we will honor and appreciate our very own the Reverend Larry M. Banks. And while I'm talking, uh, Reverend Jackson is going to come and say something, followed by Brother Sparks and then Tim White. If anyone else has anything to say, raise your hand and we will recognize you at that time. Praise God, praise God. It's good to be here. Um, as you all know that today is our pastor's anniversary and we are so glad to have him here with us. And we, we are so thankful. I am so thankful that God has washed over him and, and kept him from all hurt, harm, and danger. He was uh, away for a while because of an accident. But God is good. He's good all the time. Um, Pastor, I just like to say that I appreciate you for everything that you have done for me and, and um, for your guidance and your love and your help. And 